All right, Malik, what's up, man? Welcome to the Courtesy Flush Podcast. How are you today, bro? Oh yeah, I am. I feel great. I feel <laughs> ecstatic. I am. Thank you for having me. Yeah, of course, man. Like uh, last time, I mean, the time I asked you to be on the podcast, I was afraid because like you were high as shit downstairs. So I don't think you were retaining information. Uh, I saw that. I remember that. That was the get the getaway the gateway the gateway show. gateway yeah. show where like you tell a joke and then you get high after. Bro, you were you were gone. You were well, blasted. Bro, I was faking money. I wasn't high, bro. For real, you didn't inhale or what? Yeah. I just want that's what I do for stage time. <laughs> I, don't, I don't smoke a drink, man. I like the reason why I don't smoke a drink, I like to have, be aware of my surroundings. Yeah. Just like, you know, it's just growing up around my street dudes or my homies. And plus my dad um didn't really smoke a drink. So it was just always your know, awareness gotta be on point. Especially yeah. living up in LA. So yeah. <laughs> You've been in LA your whole life? No, nah, I'm I'm originally from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Louisiana, okay. Yeah, and my father uh, uh is from here. But he didn't want us to get ran- give like raise around the, you know, the street life, the game banging cuz it was rough back in the 80s, the 90s and my dad was kind of like in that street. He got he got a rep, but he didn't want that for us. So uh we grew I grew up in Louisiana, but in 2005, Hurricane Katrina hit. I don't know if you remember that. I was like 3 years old. 3 years old, bro. I was entering in my freshman year and he moved us out here and uh you can't avoid the street life yeah you know? but i was always boxing so it kind of like got a pass and i used to scrap for what uh it was like, oh Malik b got hands we're not about to mess with him so i was like all right that's, that's good what, shit man that was cool so so you moved here in 2005 so that's 2005 yeah, yeah. That, that's that's insane man like, i've lived here my whole life and I think I noticed, like, I, I live in Koreatown. I don't know if you know. It's, like, nearby here. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So I remember, like, back then, it was it was definitely rough. Like, early on, like, when I when I was growing up, it's rough. Now we got, like, white people moving in, like, fucking doctors with their Mercedes fucking yeah. G-Wagon. I'm like, what the fuck is going on here, bro? Fucking look at Inglewood. Inglewood? <laughs> bro, Inglewood is crazy because uh, they have, uh, you know, they have the stadium. Yeah, yeah, the, Inglewood, the Travis Scott thing. Uh, the SoFi, the SoFi uh, Stadium. The Forum, is, is that what it's called? It's the Forum and the SoFi oh, Stadium. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, SoFi Stadium, well, I don't know if I'm saying it right, but it's S-O-F-I Stadium. Yeah. And uh, on the, it's on Prairie and, and I think Manchester. But back then, when I moved out there, Prairie, Prairie and Mar- Manchester, it's like all Inglewood right there. So yeah. you got to have like Inglewood High and all that. This is where the bloods stay. <laughs> and then you got Morningside. So it was just like high school. So it was a lot of bloods and stuff. So just to see how everything just like, I want to say gentrified, but basically, yeah, because there's no yeah. rent controller in Inglewood. So I had a couple of chicks I used to stay over there. And they was like, yo, I, they raised the rent. So they had to move the further. They had to move out further west. And uh, the whites came in. <laughs> <laughs> That's how they do when there's no rent control. They they already got they already have a plan for you. So yeah, yeah, that's insane. And uh, uh, so like, where do you reside right now? What you mean? What like, part of the city? Yeah, I stay I stay in like the jungles. The j- valley is that the valley? Nah, bro, that's in mid city LA. It's like oh, Culver City ish. Hell no, nah. it's like <laughs> Obama and uh, La Brea. I'm bad with the uh, fucking uh, street names, bro. Like I've lived here all my life. I don't know street names for shit. Oh yeah, yeah. I don't even know how they work, bro. Honestly, like, how how do you remember like so many streets off the top Shit. of your head? I remember. This is so bad, but I remember the streets by like a girl house or some shit I did with the friends. Like, yeah. oh shit, you remember that time, bro? Where right over there, where on La Cienega? You remember that time when you was at Shireen House and you, <laughs> you know, what I mean, in, at the house. I'm like, oh, over there. Oh, you talking about? You know, so that's how yeah. are like. Remember when you, when you beat up old boy? On, so that's how I remember streets because there's so many goddamn streets out here. Yeah, bro. you have like moments attached to every yeah. every location. L. A. is like L. A. is like if you miss your freeway, you might as well just find a new destination. <laughs> gonna, remember, if you miss your exit, bro, you might as well just give up because it's gonna take you like ten minutes to get back to that goddamn freeway. So you gotta be familiar yeah. with these streets out here. Darling. Yeah, man. Like I just recently started driving, and it's a it's a whole fuck fest out there, man. Yeah, and people are like they don't know how to fucking drive now. Bro. Yeah, bro. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's a fucking insane shit, and like. <laughs> Like I remember, like I since I still don't know street names, I, I do the same thing as you do. It's like, oh yeah, like it's that street where like behind Bert's back room where a guy yep. got shot. Yep. See, see, what I'm saying, oh bro, I was I was over there that day on Melrose. When oh, the got... when shit was going down. Yeah, yeah, bro. I was near Bert's back room too. Yeah, I, it's it's and 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 that's how it was back in the day. Like when I was going to high school, like 
I think in 2008, 2009, with people, that was like people were done with street fighting. I mean, they always, it was always guns around, but street fighting, like, man, what's up? But now, like, man, they'll shoot this guy, try to, like, act like he wanted to fight. And then these young boys, how old are you? Uh, I'm 19, brother. 19, say, I got a YG. That's like, well, I know a YG. A couple of them. That's like your age, a little bit younger. And they pop. Damn. They pop. But they, like, tell when they pop. Like, they don't tell the internet. They're like, well, pop, pop, pop. I'm like, man. But... You know, just to get back to the point, on Melrose, I was over there, and the dude broke up a fight, should have minded his business, but I get in. He was like, bro, you in my store, you got acting crazy. Then he continued to, like, portray that kind of guy that he's gangster outside. So the dude, like, ran up, like, yo, hold up a sec. Think our boy's about to square up. This little dude just ran up and pulled out his gun, shot him, laid him flatline, and walked off and ran like nothing happened. That's fucking insane, bro. Yeah, all because he broke up a fight, got into He's like, man, I, what's up? You know, now he want to get down. Yeah. And then, you know, guys don't fight. Yeah. Stay, stay, mind your business. Why jump in front of a bullet if it's not meant for you? But I mean, I, I feel bad for the guy, the victim who lost his life, but that's LA. That, that is fact. Like, I don't know if you saw, like, I think I saw, like, some guy, like, got shot over some shoes, like, in, in Fairfax, over some dumbass shoes, like, like a couple months ago. Uh-huh. All fact check with the one when I do an edit. But yeah, it's like some kid literally got shot just for getting shoes in Fairfax. I don't know if it was Cool Kicks LA or something like that. You heard, you heard about that? Cool Kicks LA, someone got shot over shoes, bro. Cool Kicks LA is on Melrose. Yeah, Melrose. Yeah. Yeah. So I remember that that shit was crazy, like, uh, when the BLM stuff was happening and, uh, uh, like, fuck, the George Floyd, that, like, Fairfax, it was like a fucking, like, Grand Theft Auto mission, bro. What the fuck was happening, I seen, bro? I wasn't in town. I was in Houston where George, George Floyd was originally from. I was doing shows with, shows with Brian. Brian and, Callen? Uh, yeah. And uh, shout out. And uh, I just saw on the internet. Like, because they were going crazy in Houston. That's where he was from. But L.A. was just like, man. They a lot of pent up crazy. anger. Yeah, because they in the house. They want to do something and just went crazy. Yeah, like I, I, it was like in June, right? Like, because everyone was inside because yeah. of COVID, lockdown, everyone, all, yeah. a lot of bullshit going on, in the, on on the news and shit. Everyone was just pissed at everything. Yeah. I know, bro. It's like, a, but we have times like that where it's just like, man. You know, it's 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 take your frustration out on something else. Like you see a lot of celebrities getting into boxing. I mean, I've been boxing my whole life. Yeah. So it's just like that's a great exercise to get blow off some steam. You know, rather than just like pick up a gun and just you know release. And now you facing the consequences of like squeezing that trigger. So you gotta, you know, my guy, my dad, I would say you man enough to put. Uh, you know, pull the trigger, be man enough to deal with the consequences after a trigger. Because it all, it all comes back full circle. Yeah. So I remember, uh, like, I think you said something about, like, in Ari Manis' podcast. Like, I listened to that one. Uh, yeah. Like, you said, like, you got, like, you in your neighborhood, you got beat up or something. And you went up to your dad or something like that. It was yeah, a story. Yeah. And, like, that that was, like, I was listening to it. I was like, damn, that's so... It's crazy that your dad was cool with that, you know? Like, who, like, Shit. got you into the passion of boxing and stuff. Oh, yeah. He wasn't fucking cool with it. He was like... <laughs> I got beat up, and he was like, bro. And then the bad thing about it, I think I ran. And then uh, he was like, bro, I ain't no running over here. So he was like, you really, you, you, you if you run, you always got to come home to me, and I'm going to hear about it. So who would you rather get your ass with, by you, by me, or someone out there? Because mm. I'm going a, I'm to a go hard. I'm going to go in on you. Like, and he taught me how to be a man. So it's just like from that moment on, when I was like, what, 9, 10, it was uh, just – just like being a man, face your fears. Like, you know what I mean? Stand on what you stand on, believe in what you believe in. Say what you say, say what you mean. And uh, yeah, because either way, you got to deal with the outcome. Yeah, so that's rather, true. I wouldn't be a coward. I, that's the worst thing you can be called in the neighborhood is a coward. So you didn't want, you know, people talk. So I, I always love my name to have no blemishes on it. Like, I, I love my rep. So there's like one thing about Mal that he don't stand on what he believe or he ain't going to, you know, he ain't going to run for anything. That's and it, Even in L.A., I, when I moved out here, I didn't have any rep. But yet, I have, like, friends who I, like, gangbangers who used to box, and they like, yo, you're real. And they kind of, like, taught me the street life. You know, my dad didn't want me, like, grow up in it, but I was always around them. And it was some cool dudes. And I didn't really, and I, I wasn't mad enough to make my own decisions. I didn't want to go that route. I wanted to continue to box because I love fighting. Yeah, of course, man. So, that, yeah. It's it's a good way to blow off seeing you're right. You know, it's, it's a <laughs> yeah. positive way to do it. And I so, saw, yeah. like... You were boxing so much, like, you ended up on Creed, bro. Oh, yeah, man. Tell that me about that. Story. How did that happen? Um, So, I I was boxing. I was killing in Louisiana. And I had, like, people who, were, like, came up in my stable. We was all, uh, it was like Sports Academy. We was all under this one famous coach named DC. He was old. 
but he knew a lot about boxing. He had wisdom. And when I moved out here, I was boxing. I was like, all right, uh, let me just go to this gym. Some told me because these guys were at my fight. They was like, bro, come train over here. I want to work with you. I'm like, all right, whatever. Never been to this gym before. I'm at 316. I'm sparring guys and I'm touching them up, right? This particular day, a childhood friend named Corey Collette, he's like big as hell. I remember he used to be fat. He's like big. He's a muscular guy. Yeah. And he walks in with Michael B. Jordan. So I'm like, oh, bro. I'm like, oh, Wallace? You know, I'll call Michael B. Jordan. I was like, Wallace? You know, because I watched The Wire. Yeah. And uh, he was like, oh, this dude laughing. I was like, what's up, Corey? Like, long time. And then Corey's like, yo, you used to be bad back in the day. You still got those hands? I'm like, hell yeah. He was like, okay. So I'm talking to Michael B. Jordan. We cool. I'm, I mean, I'm, I never, I'm never starstruck, but we having like a normal conversation, like how we're talking. Yeah. Right. And then I get in the ring and I'm a complete, like a different guy, like a savage, like hurt deadly. He's like, what, how the fuck did he turn it on and turn it? And I'm talking shit. I'm like, Mike, you got to throw a hand like this. And I'm just talking shit. Yeah. So when I got out the ring, Corey's like, bro, we got a movie role for you. And I was like, all right. So I like, Mike was like, bro, meet me at my crib. Uh, I'm gonna text you and all that. So he texts me, man of his word. I pull up to his crib, fat ass crib too, by the way. <laughs> Talking about in the hills, and then I think it was just Corey, I and and Mike was just like reading over the script. And I was like, all right, bro, hey, I got you, I got you. And I, I'm he was like telling me like, yo, I want you to play this role. And my whole time, I'm like, look, this is a nice ass house. Bro. <laughs> <laughs> you heard about that, like, bro? I can you mean tell me this is what you get from all movies and shit? So, uh, you know, yeah. And he was like cool enough, so he like helped me with the character, helped me with the role. Uh, I met Ryan, and they gave me the part. Damn, that's insane, that's bro! How, yeah, off of boxing. That's cool as shit, bro. Not, not a day, and that, but I, I didn't, I didn't want to be foolish on camera, so I knew I had lines, so I went to acting class. So I didn't want to look look crazy. It was one, so I really studied for that role, and they only gave me like two lines. I was pissed off, <laughs> but I killed that line though. Yeah, yeah, I remember, I remember, yeah. like. Uh, you did kill those two lines. Appreciate you. But uh, I, I caught you in a lie, man. Huh? I caught you in a lie. You said you don't get starstruck. Cat Williams. Well, that's different. <laughs> Why is that different? the laugh factory, man. Cat Williams is a legend. Yeah, he is a legend. He's yeah. a legend. So, I mean, that I really wasn't starstruck. It was just like, damn, that's Cat at the laugh factory. And then he didn't say anything. I'm like, fuck. You know, and all everybody laughed. It's one of those situations where I was like, you know what? Fuck y'all. <laughs> Everybody like, hi, cat. You know, the voice got a little like light and all that. Hi, cat. And I'm like, hey, look at me. And I was like, well, anytime he hear a man's voice is lighter than his, he shouldn't respond either. So <laughs> I was like, hi, cat. And then everybody looked, and everybody, he looked at me, didn't say anything. He went downstairs. Everybody, like, ah, man, fuck y'all. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. I was, at, I was at the factory a couple days ago. I saw Bobby Lee, bro. Like, I was starstruck too. Oh, uh, yeah. Bobby Lee at the uh, Lab Factory? Yeah. yeah. So, like, uh, I was just taking a piss, right? Uh -huh. I went out into the restroom, and then, you know, the ladies' side, and then the hallway. Yeah. So he was just smoking there, and I, I saw him, because I, I, he, he was facing my back. So I, was, I, like, took a deep breath. I was like, okay, let me, like, compose myself and go talk to him. So I told him how like I do stand up and I do a podcast and everything. And he he was chill. As hell. Have you met Bobby Lee? Bro, Bobby is the fuck. Bro, he's that's my guy. Every he's time we're chill. at the store, yeah, he just he, that's my guy, bro. I be want to knock him out sometimes. Because <laughs> he played too much. You know Bobby played too much. Yeah, he bro. was like touching my titties and bro, shit. Bro, thank you. Thank you. I'm like, Bobby, stop, <laughs> bro. Bro, Stop. Like, he's the, so the, fucking funny. The first moment I met him, he's like, Oh, you're so beautiful. I was like, Oh, he shit. I don't and you know. let him grab it. You yeah, see what I'm like, saying? I was like, Fuck it. Once Bobby Lee does that shit, you gotta let him, like, I don't know. No, man. the fuck you don't. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell? This is the courtesy flush. This is, yes, what sir. The fuck? <laughs> I'm cool with Bobby touching my titties, bro. It's all bro, good. Bro, what? You, you don't have tits, bro. I see you work out. You be doing those fucking bench presses. I got pecs, but I would, even if I had man boobs, I would not let a, <laughs> Bobby Lee grab him out of all people. Let, let a dime grab him. Bobby Lee? Ugh. You motherfucker. Nah, that's my guy. But yeah, he is, he is my fucking guy. I'll stop him. I was like, in this tracks. Motherfucker, stop, Bobby. What the fuck is going on? He yeah. goes for it, man. He's funny as fuck. Yeah, he's I love fucking it. hilarious, I love man. Bobby's my guy. Do you know, uh, so on Cutting Weight, I got uh, my guy, Jamar Neighbors. Jamar Neighbors, yeah. yeah. He's your new co-host, yeah. And he, uh, his, Bobby's girl. K, K, something with the K. Something said on the podcast that if she, if was something would, would, I don't know, I'm not, this is, of course, this is not her words, but something along the lines of if something happens to Bobby, the next comic she'll have sex with is Jamar Neighbors. <laughs> I was like, yo, what? I was like, salute, King. 
That's my guy, bro. <laughs> Jamar, yeah. yeah. I, I, I watch cutting weight sometimes, bro. I, I, I don't know. Like, I've been there, like, since the early days of cutting weight, man. Bro. Like, episode one, I remember. You, you you told me that. You told me that, like, a couple of years ago. You was like, yo, when I did, we did a show together. You, like, always been supportive of my podcast. Yeah, so like, I, honestly, man. Like, you being here, like, I'm honestly, like, I... Uh, I've, I've always been like, like I've always been like support team Malik, you know, like uh, you, we met in Skip Town Playhouse like two years ago with yep. comedian Arthur and shit, bro. Yeah, yeah. Like you, like, like I was asking you for some advice because I did a setup at Skip Town and I was like, I was nervous and shit. Mm -hmm. And, you know, like, yeah, I mean, you kind of I think you knew I was nervous and you like gave me some pointers and shit. And uh, I was like always appreciative of you, man. Like, I you know, that. Nah, bro, you know, I, I love just like, you know, you got to help people, bro. Yeah. You know, you don't get. You don't get to the top on your own. You yeah, gotta have a team no, or you know meet great people along the lines and on your way. So if if anything I can give out any advice or anything I can do, I try to do it because I will like that in return. It's kind of you know person I am. Yeah, of course. But like yeah. I remember, like the moment I knew I liked you was like uh, like you read your room, bro. Like it was like a Muslim crowd. Yeah, you know it was like a lot of women with hijabs on, like yeah. a lot of Muslim people, and like you made a joke about like you had this girlfriend. And like you, you read something to the Quran, like a, like a surah. Like how how did you how did you remember that stuff, bro? Uh, my my I was so so my pops uh was uh converted to Islam. Islam, okay. Yeah. So I was I was always brought up in the right guidance and the right like understanding of of discipline of of peace. You know, do what to others as as you want to done uh, upon you. So it was more so. I I was now my dad is very you know methodical he's very uh strategic uh he's he's stoic yeah discipline so and that's all because well he's always been like that but it was more so he, he always read books he always study and um you know it, just coming up in that household so is my mom and stuff like that so he we really had a unified household you know it was peace and i remember you know he do ramadan i did ramadan when i got older and he had studied the Quran. He used to be a, a, a minister in uh, Louisiana. Oh, wow. And just, just, yeah, just discipline. So, you know, a couple of times you remember, uh, you know, verses in the Quran. So I, I saw the crowd and I was like, oh, okay, you know, let's let's go to Mecca one time. Yeah. You know? <laughs> let's go to Mecca, you know? Let's get it. Let's do it for Mecca one time. Yeah. <laughs> and, Shout out and, Allah. And, and, you know, like like a lot of, like, black guys, like, who, who go to prison, uh, they, Malcolm X, they, Malcolm X, or or current black guys, they they're heavy into Islam because it's like discipline. They understand and they want um, they want to learn more about knowledge of self and stuff like that. So yeah. it was more so. That's why I connected on the guys in the street and my pops. It, that was the like bridge I could connect as far as like just fighting. It was just more so like how discipline and how like authentic those guys were like street you mean a street dude that's all he that's all he know he's gonna stay what he he's gonna stay true to what he knows you know you meet you meet like someone like my pops or someone or in, in the islamic faith they're strictly and they're gonna stay true to themselves about what they, they what they preach and they practice what they preach yeah you know so that's why i loved about my pops and everyone so Okay, that's that's amazing, man. Yeah, so uh, that's how I read the room. I was like, yeah, let's go to Mecca. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's 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 a good thing. Like, uh, uh, like being Muslim myself, bro. Like in the comedy industry, it's kind of tough because like some people get a bad rep. Like a bunch of people are like alcoholics. You go like I, yeah. I I can't really go into the comedy store and Laugh Factory and improv. I still do. I just bullshit my way in a lot of the time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, you know, 19 like nineteen year old ass. Yeah, just <laughs> busting myself in Young there, like ass fucking cheating the system and all yeah, that, but yeah. you that's hustling like that's the grind that's what you need like i did i did belly room and stuff and like sometimes people get sus like you seem young bro you're supposed to be here and like yeah. uh like am i like my parents they know like most of the money like you go to a comedy club there's a two drink minimum you gotta buy two alcoholic drinks or you know you gotta buy two drinks yeah. well yeah just, my, my pops did the same thing he, he just do the water yeah just do water yeah, yeah that's what i do too but like you know that's where they make their money and like uh if like if if i get seen there they lose their liquor license i would fuck up the comedy store yeah, you know i don't want to do that huge risk yeah yeah it is a risk so yeah i like i've done open mics at the laugh factory belly room and all that but i like to stay within like the slotted you know what i mean that's just yeah. easy like fourth sure. wall burst back room rest in peace burst back room <laughs> but this this is a great spot 
Oh, like, third wheel. Yeah, third wheel is dope. Uh, I've seen you on the story of like yeah. uh, midnight just going at it, bro. Bro, it, you know what? Comedy is it's like a it's like an unsolved puzzle. Yeah. It, no matter what how what piece you think you got it figured out, whatever, it's always a piece that you got to find. So it's just like constantly thinking. It's like if you have played chess, so many ways to like start or open or or so many ways to checkmate. So that's how I look at it. You constantly have to work on your craft. It's never incomplete. Just when like, oh shit, I got a tight 10 minutes, move on to another new 10. You yeah. Know, it's constantly over and over and over again. That's what I love about it, honestly. It's and just, it's tough, bro. Like even yeah. like I remember getting my first tight five that I was like comfortable with and like uh doing doing it at a show and just like feeling like Everyone laughing at your jokes, everyone vibing. It's like, it's a good, it's fucking addicting, bro, honestly. Yeah. Like, once you're hooked to that shit, once you're hooked to that first laugh, it's fucking over. You're addicted. That's, yeah. Psh, addiction is great. That laugh is great. It's yeah. It's something you can't, you can't really, like, put in words. Yeah, you can Because every man, like, you have been be around a girl, you making her laugh, that feeling right there. <laughs> every guy. Like, yeah. Shit, man, I'm killing right now. <laughs> you know, especially a woman. Like, man, hell yeah, you feel great about yourself. And that's equivalent to, like, how... I, I think how I feel about like making a crowd laugh. It's like, damn, it's that hot girl that I continue to make her laugh. Okay, yeah. You know, ooh, she gonna give me some. You know what I mean? Like that kind of <laughs> Yeah, yeah, of course, man. Things. But like yeah. there's there's also a bad side to that. It's it's the bombing, bro. Bombing. I've bombed a couple times. I know how it feels, that's man. That's not the bad side. That's I think that's the best side. I think that's like when you know you're human. That's yeah. when you know you don't have it figured out. That's when you know like, oh, I gotta work harder or I'm a part of this art now yeah it's an art to comedy and i don't have it all figured out but it's it's something about it that that the bombing kind of like uh it, it kind of sets you up for success yeah it does because after that bomb you don't feel good and you're like man i'm about to you know i want to do better i want to do better so you hit it 10 times harder sometimes when i like slack off and I not in my room. I'm like, man, I'm just chill for a week. Or I'm gonna chill for a couple of days. And I go up there, and nothing hits. Oh, I'm back on it. Oh, hell no, because you can't sleep with a bomb. You think nope. about that. Fuck no, you, you can't. You think do that. about that for the next couple of days. So it's just like a bomb helps, and it doesn't feel good. Yeah. And if if it does feel good, you in it for the wrong reasons. Yep. Because you know? I remember I started comedy when I was 16. I remember, man, like I did a Burt's Blast Off show. I was fucking 16 years old. I had a fucking amazing set. And I was like, damn, I'm like on top of my shit. Yeah. And I was, I'm doing great. I'm 16. All these 30-year-old motherfuckers, you know, I'm, like, I'm about to fucking dethrone them. Yeah. Next day, I had a show at Ha Ha Comedy Club. Mm -hmm. I fucking bombed, yo. I fucking did horrible. Like it was trash. I didn't feel good about myself. And then that's when I knew like, yeah, I got a little cocky. That's a bad thing. So I had to go back, start writing again and do everything again. And then I had a set with like Russell Peters coming up and shit. So I, I, I knew I had to like set myself up and, you know, iron iron out all the, you know, bad stuff. Mm -hmm. And yeah, like, and then COVID happened afterwards. So I had a year off, like, but you had a good 2020, I think from, from my eyes, uh, yeah. you know, not great. talking to you personally, but like yeah. as a, as a comedian and podcaster, it looked like you had a really positive 2020. Yeah, bro. This is just hard work gets you. Um, I think like, and I was blessed enough to have like a great career so far in comedy. Like my first year, First couple of months in, I was on the road with Jeff Garland. Yeah. My second year, I was on the road with Brian Callen. Now my third year, I'm on. I was doing uh, a podcast and I was on the road with Brendan Shop. So it was just like three years. It was like what? What the hell? You know, you don't really start off like that. Yeah. So kind of, I wouldn't. But that's what hard work gets you. You know, and I don't. I I I'm just excited. I'm prepared, and I'm you know, working hard for the future. But. That's the kind of it, 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 you need breaks in this game, but I didn't look for breaks. I tried to earn it every night because um, I knew uh, um, I was, you know, in the game for like a short amount of time. But I don't look at it as like time wise because the guy can like, how long you been doing comedy? Well, I've been doing it for four years often. Well, how long you been doing it for four years? Well, sometimes well, a couple months I took off and all that. But if a guy, let's say a guy was doing it for did stand up like three times a month. Right. But if a guy is doing three mics or three uh, three shows a day, who has an advantage? Yeah. The guy who's been doing it three times a day as opposed to the guy who's been doing it three times a month. Yeah, just because you've been doing it longer. What about your hours? What are you doing? Putting the hours in, you know, so. You remember Pete Saval? 
Yeah, I remember Pete. Yeah, Dude, that motherfucker. He was at every mic, bro. He was at every show. You saw him everywhere, right? Like, yeah. I, am I wrong in that? Yeah. Like, yeah. I remember he was grinding, bro. Yeah, I was, he was. Yeah. Oh, that's like that inspiring. Like that amount of hard work and like you too, bro. Like I saw you yeah. at, I see you at Bird's Blast Off, and then I see you at Fourth Wall, and then I see you at Ha Ha. See you at the Improv. Bro, I just see you mic. going, fucking <laughs> people's backyards and shit, bro. Bro, what? Because you love standing, whatever. I'm yeah, mic wherever the mic, the mic is, bro. I'm, I got some shit to say. Shout out to Pete now. Pete is a fucking cook, chef, a great yeah. chef. Yeah, out here cooking cupcakes and shit <laughs> in Utah. <With> yes, some, <laughs> sir. Brother, I be seeing him on that man in love. That's how you know you're in love. Where you just like, man, I'm about to just go ahead and cook. <laughs> man, and found his queen. I was like, oh shit, Pete. Yes, sir. Yeah, Very yeah. happy for you, Pete. Uh, he helped me get started early on too. I remember seeing Pete him a lot. Dude. Yeah, Pete I remember mean, Pete boxing me one time. Oh like, shit, bro, he had like the biggest legs ever. I was like, fuck, Pete. <laughs> Fuck Pete, bro. But like, he nice, he nice. He yeah, he's needed. super nice. You don't expect that from his look. And that's like yeah. part of his sets too. Like, it, he dope as shit. I like fuck Pete. yeah, really he nice was, guy. I think it was like kickboxing or whatever he did. It's like, all right, Pete, don't you cross the line, I'll fuck you up. <laughs> nah, that's my guy. Yeah, he is my guy too, man. How long have you been doing stand-up for, bro? Three years, bro. Three years? Oh, yeah, about the same. the fourth, man. Fuck, that's a good-ass three years. I don't know if you know that. I've seen it. <laughs> well, it was... It was yeah, it was a great. It was yeah, great. there's no. I don't think there's any. It was, was a blessing, bro. Like I, I just tried to, try to like put my imprint on the game. Whatever I can do to provide Malik B, the sauce, a Roly Boy, whatever you want yeah. to do. Like that's what I wanted to like add to the game in my way. I don't want to be a follower. I don't want to do like be the crowd. I want to stand out from the crowd. Yeah, you know, I want to lead the pack. So that's what I wanted to do. Like whatever I could do to just try to make sure I'm rememberable. In this game, I try to like think outside the box. Yeah, yeah, I've seen that, bro. Appreciate that. And uh, what do you call it? Uh, how do your folks feel about you doing stand up, bro? Oh, like, my mom is the funniest person, uh, like I know. <laughs> like we call each other bro. Yeah, like, that's how. Like, yo, she's so cool. She's so fucking funny, and uh, she haven't been to, like one. I think she's so hilarious because um, no matter how. Like all the family members or her friends would tell her I'm funny. She'll never go to a show. <laughs> Damn, she hasn't been to it. Nah. Yeah, my parents haven't either, man. Yeah, my my dad go to the show. My dad, all of my family members, but my mom, nah, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> she don't believe I'm funny yet. She's so funny. yeah. No, I uh, my none of my parents or family members have seen me do. St- I mean, they might have technically seen it once because I I was at a wedding and like they're mm. like. Oh, you know, you do comedy, and yeah. they fucking threw me up there, and I was like, "Yeah, I, I do do comedy, but don't expect much yet." You know, yeah. they just threw me up there, and my parents saw that it was a little taste. But then, you know, you know what I mean? Like comedy, you do here. I had to switch it up. You had to read the room. You know, it's like a Daisy Muslim crowd. You can't be saying all the stuff you say at Third Wheel at midnight. You know, yeah, it's a different kind of crowd. <laughs> it's yeah. a different crowd for real, bro. But that's the whole thing. Like, uh, you know, I met Al Qadri. That's my guy. Yeah, he is my. He's been tapping into that business, the fucking yeah. wedding mics. Yeah, fucking bro, he on TikToks uh, like he's a legend. Getting millions of views, man. He yeah. on something. Everyone's everyone I know, man. They're doing so good, and I'm I always like I'm like like I'm like always on them, bro. Like bro, good shit. Like everybody you, has their turn, bro. Yeah. So just like yo, it's 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 once you get your turn, be ready for, you know, what it brings. Be ready for what you have to offer because now the world is watching. Yeah, now he blowing up. He like boom. It's constant. So that's what he's providing to the game. So like, yeah, I, that's all I always say. Like everybody, be cool, bro. Be nice to people. You know what I mean? Just be real. Stay true to yourself. But everybody has a turn. So yes, sir. Depending on what you do with it. So like, uh, what advice would you give me, man? Because like I've seen. Uh, I think I watched Cutting Weight podcast episode one. I've been catching like a, a couple episodes here and there, all the way till now. Like you're doing, you're doing amazing, man. Like your, your views are up, the quality is up. Like Thank you seem you. very comfortable doing fucking freestyles at the beginning. Oh, and yeah, say. yeah, we just. Rap, I think rapping with a guest is just it's so funny. Cause yeah, yeah. It gets them out of their, their element. Yeah, you know? it does. Now, now people like come on my podcast. They know they got to rap, so it's like, oh, all right. Yeah, yeah. You know, but I, I got to get more guests on or newer guests. On yes, sir. Like, like yeah. the Jeremiah episode was great and everything. Thing, yeah. Jeremiah body. Shout out to the scissor bro himself. <laughs> yeah. Fucking killed it, crushed it. Cutting weight, man. So yeah. w- what advice would you have for me to help me like elevate my podcast and stuff? Uh bro, if you love it, believe in it, treat it like it's your baby, man. Um, how would you treat your baby? Would you take care of it? Would you show it all to the world? Would you understand like this is my baby? Everybody look at my baby because it's cute. Uh <laughs> You yeah, know, yeah, but like this is this is your, you know, you got it, bro. I, honestly, I'm still trying to figure it out. You know, it's always something new, something 
could be done. So it was just like once you find your niche, yeah, you stay to it. You know, you got it. You know, what does the curly f- courtesy flush mean to you? So whatever it means, like bro, just have fun doing it. That's yes, all sir. I say that. Yeah. That's some good advice, bro. Treat it like a baby. Like it's Treat your baby. It's your baby. You want to show it off to the world. Fuck yeah, man. Yeah. I appreciate that, bro. Yeah. I'm gonna take that advice. No, no, no. Oh, change you don't want to show you change wanna, the diaper and shit. Change the goddamn diaper, bro. Flush it down the courtesy, courtesy flush. Bro. Flush it flush twice. Flush that shit down. Flush that shit twice. Twice, baby. bro. That's the courtesy flush. Bro. Yes, like, sir. Some doodle skin marks around the damn <laughs> toilet. Flush it twice, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, you know, like I feel like we could cut this out if you want, bro. But like, you know, when we mentioned cutting away, you know, your co-host changed recently. Do you want to speak upon that or? I mean, uh, uh, ain't nothing. I mean, my co-host changed. Uh, I mean, uh, what else I say? I got. I used to have Justin Elliott. Yeah. You know I mean, and he went over them side. I don't really want to speak on that situation because I'm tired of talking about. This yeah, thing. I know, bro. Uh, straight bitch ass niggas, bro. <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, but I, Jamar just like filled in. I like, like Jamar a lot. Jamar's dope, bro. You know, like, and I always like had a connection with Jamar. That was my guy because we we really boxed, and I took him to the gym I'm outside. Like that was the homie. Yeah, like, whatever I needed. Like I, he was learning from me about boxing. I was learning from him about comedy. So it was like a, a great symbolic trade off a little bit. Yeah, and it was a great relationship. And I think that give and take I, relationship. Yeah, give and take. And I thought that was like dope. So when I asked him to do, it, I was like, bro, come on, man. I need, you know, I need. I'm about to replace. You know, I just like, you know, real people around me and shit like that. He was like, all right, bet. So he knew the situation. I told him the situation. He was like, oh, bro, straight up. So, you know, he locked in. And we try to work around each other's schedule. And, you know, I was like, bro, let's just have fun. Now we're having fun. We're figuring it out. He liked to come up with ideas. He'll call me. I'm like, bro, do whatever. You know, we have fun. So that's what I like. Yes, He's sir. Cool well, where's your studio at? It's a nice studio. Bro, man. it's at the Cuttingway Enterprise in Glendale. Oh, shit. You know what I mean? Pull up if you really want about that life. We was really about to we about to have we about to change the game. We about to have like people fight on the podcast. We're gonna oh fuck. We're gonna interview two people and at the end you gotta fight. <laughs> <laughs> That's shit, a good bro. fucking idea, bro. Yeah, man. Cutting like, weight. Yeah, bro. Get some shit off. Like it's some real shit. Like it's authentic. It's 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 you know. Yes, sir. Malikdrip.com. Bro, Malikdrip.com, uh cuttingweightpodcast.com. We got the ski mask coming out. Busser B U S R B U S R bro. Slash Malik slash, c- cutting weight. slash cutting weight. <laughs> Good on you, bro. Getting sponsors and shit, bro. Bro, they trying to believe in us, man. Like, I think it's it's about the product. Yes, the sir. The product is now now that we have an eyes on our product, so people starting to look and shit like that. So yes, you sir. Be ready when people have the eyes on you. So that's all it is, man. What's going on here? This is the this is the Rolly Boy Ski Mask. Rolly Boy Ski Mask. Uh, yeah. Tell me about your beef with Big Sean, Little Sean, Little Sean. Well, it's not, <laughs> little Sean. <laughs> I saw him the other day on Melrose, man. He, what? Yeah, he was working out at the gym, man. Little, I was like, man, this little dude, little. Um, uh, it's I mean, what beef? Psh, I'm past Big Sean, uh, Little Sean, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> nah, there's no beef, bro. It's just like a little bit. Uh, like I, that's how I wanted to like introduce myself to the rap game, Rolly Boy. And I was like, I need somebody to just go after, like on some Wu Tang shit. Yes, sir. You know what I mean? And um, you know, I felt like he was a Stapleton dude. I was from Park Hill. You feel me? And uh, <laughs> <laughs> nah, it, it was it was over at uh, my ex. She was cool, and um, she meant you know his name got mentioned and whatnot. And I was like, man, Big Sean, his flow is not all that yeah, to me. Yeah. To me, like that super duper flow, the wow with the bow and the chime, like all that shit. <laughs> I was like, man, that, Detroit rappers don't rap like that. You know what I mean? I grew up on Doughboy Cash Out Boys. You know what I mean? Yes, sir. Um, I grew up on Trick Trick. I, I grew up on like real G's up in Detroit. You know, D12. You know what I mean? And and Ob Trice. This is like so many. Ob Trice, bro. Yeah, I grew Fuck up. On, yeah, that's- I, I, I haven't heard that all, name in a while. Yeah, bro. I grew up on all these dudes. So when I hear Big Sean flow, I was like, man, he easy to go out there and start a beef with. And that's what I did. <laughs> <laughs> kind of, I think, I thought he responded. I was like, bro, don't make me do a remix <laughs> of the Lil Sean diss part two, bro. On SoundCloud. Check it out, guys. I'll yeah. Link it down Listen below. to that, man. Shit fire. Appreciate you. So uh, in your during your reign on- I'm in here with the ski mask on. Yes, sir. I'm about, he's about to get real good. Fucking, Talk to me. Ask me about anything now, bro. You look like Why a you? Grand Theft Auto fucking character, Sorry, bro. bro. Fucking don't avatar. Don't fucking matter, bro. GTA. Sad. High fuck yeah. Shit, yeah That's yeah, a compliment, yeah, bro. bro. Yeah. 
So during your reign in Fighter and the Kid, uh, you Sorry. you rub shoulders against some like really a lister, you know, people, man. But I saw you with Joe Coy and stuff. But mm -hmm. uh, tell me about meeting Mike Tyson. How was that like, bro? Bro, Mike was real, bro. That was a dope dude. He was uh, he was cool. I just took a picture. I met I met his friend. His friend knew me from somewhere. I forgot forget my guy's name. We finally clicked. Like the guy, Mike Tyson, manager uh, or whatever, his granddad or someone someone he knew. He and has a granddad still alive, bro. Nah, it was somebody, bro. <laughs> his his it was Mike Tyson family member. He knew me from beating up people back in the day. He was like, "Oh shit!" And I was talking to him. I was Damn. like, "Yo, let me meet Mike." He was like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna get Mike." And I just like took a picture, and um, it it was cool. Mike was just chill. He like literally before I even took a picture, I went. He was like walked over. I was like, "What's up, Mike? I'm a big fan." Like, yeah, 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 yeah. What's up? He had these shoes on. I was like, okay, that's what's up. Fuck I was yeah, like, yeah. Man. Thank you. So I knew that because I went there with Brendan. And uh, Chappelle and um, I was like, man, I, I want to meet Mike, and I don't know what I didn't know if I can meet it off the strength of my own. So I, I thank God I knew someone that was there, and I was like, hey, bro, and he was close to Mike. He brought me up to Mike, and I was like, man, and I'm a big fan, bro. I appreciate everything you did to the sport, bro. You really a, is you know one of the greats, legend. yeah, yeah. legends, man. It's like, yeah, thank you, thank you. Hangover. I mean, he had like a mushroom or some weed, and he was taking that shit, <laughs> <laughs> bro. Like. You're insane, man. Like, uh, you got fucking mentioned on JRE. That's insane, bro. I mean, I got mentioned on what? J Joe Rogan Experience. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, With Brian, Brian kind of yeah. butchered your fucking name, but I yeah. know Moloch. I was like, man, whatever. Yeah, that, that was Moloch. legendary. Yeah. I, I appreciate anyone who, who, you know, mentioned me. You know what I mean? And, and I, I, I really care about that shit because you know like for me rep is everything yeah that's everything. how i was brought up so i don't want my rep to be it's no smut on it because i worked hard for my rep you see how hard i work in the, in the yeah man. in the game so for him to bring up my name on the one of the biggest podcasts if not the biggest podcast at that time was was incredible and i appreciate brian brian the real one i talked to him this weekend we talked about the fight anthony joshua and uzik we talked about the upcoming fight so yes, sir. brian always checking in he a real one bro i appreciate him if it wasn't for him I wouldn't be the comedian that I am today. Like he gave me great advice about comedy. Yeah, of course. You know, yeah. and now I can write and I understand the structure and everything. So, very intellect, uh, you know, very intellectual and very artistic. He has a great mind, and you know, that's my guy. Yeah, you're very polished for someone who's three years in. Like, oh, you're you, like bro. I saw your set at the Gateway, and you're like you're fucking smooth with it, bro. You're talking about the. Uh, was it like LAX traffic? Or oh, yeah, 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 yeah. The road, the, the traffic out here and piss you off. Uh, yeah. You know? yeah, Everybody can relate to that. Jake. Yes, sir. If you driving, boy, whoo, I don't want to get to it, but my, I'm, I'll get pissed. I get, bad drivers got me closer to God because every time <laughs> I get in the car, I got to say a prayer before I start the engine up. I'm like, man, God, you know, hey, it's me again. Shit. Assalamu alaikum. Brother, come on, brother. I don't, you about to have a visitor. Cause you fuck with me in the road if you want to, but it's, LA is just like driving. It's like, like bad, bro. Like people came out this pandemic and forgot how to. But drive. you look like Frozone right now. I do. <laughs> like fucking Frozone, bro. You gonna laugh at that? Where am I, super soup? <laughs> <laughs> Someone told me I look like Buzz Lightyear. What the fuck? Cause I had I had like a what green, the fuck? I had a green one, bro. And uh, there was like Buzz Lightyear. I went on stage with it. I was like, Man, I don't care. Went up on stage with it, aggressive. It was like, okay, that's enough. <laughs> Man, so, what the fuck, Buzz Light? Buzz Light, because uh -huh. I had it, I had it, I had it like, I had it like this. So I had the ski mask like this, and and it was like green. Oh, okay. So okay. they was like, yo, you look like Buzz Lightyear without the uh, helmet on. Yeah. So like, man, fuck y'all. <laughs> y'all know my life, dog. Fuck yeah, bro. <laughs> Man, yeah. you've been. Like, I was. Just, I would just see you in like the most random. Like, he ever had that moment where like you're just watching TV and you're like, "What the fuck? I know that guy." I oh, had yeah, that yeah, with yeah. you on HBO. I was like, "What the fuck are you doing here, oh, bro?" Insecure. Yeah, yeah, I was like, "It's a Ray and shit." I was like, "Dude, what the fuck are you doing bro, on HBO?" I had so I had a bigger part, man, on Insecure. Shout out to Issa Ray and Insecure yes, family for accepting me. But I was on tour with Brian Callen, so I couldn't make the time time and i think it was in nebraska when they was like yeah we need you to do adr work and I, I sent that in over the phone and just like you know scheduling but i'm so thankful to be like a little 13 second clip yeah <laughs> of me so it was good it was dope you know if you want to watch it's called killing toya and i play like the young guy the reenactment of that uh story and i'm uh i'm excited you know i've been 
got a couple, you know, I don't want to say too much, but I got some things in the works. Hopefully it can, uh, you all uh, be looking to a, a Roly Boy 2020. Yes, sir. 2022, I should say. 2022, bro. That's yeah. Fucking, you're dropping an album. Bro, shit, bro. yeah. I, listen, you know what it is? It's like COVID took a year back. So I like to like just like go back to before it was COVID. Like, I like that shit didn't even happen. Yes, sir. You know, I don't even have a pass after, tw- you know, 2020. <laughs> oh, I forgot about all that shit. <sighs> it, was a, it was a fucking, what a year. Like, yeah. just honestly, what, what the fuck even happened? Kobe even, died. Man, I don't even want to look at that. 2020, I erased that year. Yeah. So, shit, this, this is my, I'm in my 2020 right now. So <laughs> like, but yeah, it was a lot, man. You can't, you know, like, shout just out. Just one me. after another, bro. Yeah, we lost Kobe and Nipsey. Yeah. Oh, no, Nipsey. Nipsey got, they, they were like 8, 19, right? You're or? right, my G. You're yeah. Right. We lost Kobe last year, right? Yeah, yeah, in t- 2020, early 2020, February. Oh, okay, February 2020, and then we lost someone later. They who? Chadwick Boseman. Chadwick Boseman. Yeah, that was that's what it was. Damn, Damn. Chad. Then we just like lost DMA. We lost a lot of people this year. Yeah, COVID yeah. still hitting. Yeah, man. Like, Shout out just, to Michael Williams, RP what Michael K. Williams, man. Oh yeah, he's Omar. on Battlefield, bro. Yeah. And Wired and everything, bro. He's a fucking legend, a dude. Talented guy, man. It's, it sucks. Yeah. But, yeah. That was tough. But, you know, be safe out there. That's all you can do is be safe. Um, don't cut Malik off on traffic. Oh, shit, no. Don't cut me off at all on traffic. Man, <laughs> get the hell out of my way, please. <laughs> Did you ever meet Joe Rogan in person? I, yeah, I met him a couple of times. But the way Brian will bring people around Jay, Joe Rogan, I heard that it was it was like high and by. So it was like, all right. You don't, you don't get a chance to like... I mean, what more? I don't know. Yeah, what, I, I wouldn't know what to say to him either, honestly. Yeah, I, I feel like... I want to fucking dethrone him. That's what I want to do. I'm fucking, I want that $100 million, bro. Fuck that dude, shit. Bro, I want, there, I want bro. it, bro. It's, listen, it's the hard work. I think he's been doing it for podcasts for yeah, 30 plus years. So. Fucking, he's been doing it for a long yeah, time. Yeah, stay long. committed. So with Brian Redband, that first episode was just him and a shitty webcam. Yeah. Joe, Jerry, number one. Damn. It's that consistency, bro. He had thousands upon thousands of episodes. Yeah. And, uh, you know, UFC commentator, he, he's had a really good career. Fear uh, Factor? Yep. X, X, fear Factor. Yeah, Fear Factor. I said X Factor. But yeah, yeah, Fear, fear Factor, uh, fucking everything, man. He does everything. Have you seen him when he was younger? Like, dude, he had, like, fucking nice hair, yeah. jawline and everything. All the fun. Funny as hell. Yeah, HGH just fucking took all that shit away, bro. <laughs> shit, I don't know, bro. That's that's crazy. <laughs> yeah, damn, man. He's a uh, he's a consistent guy. Yeah. Um, Consistency is where it's at. Even if you got to take HGH, I guess I don't know what you. Yeah, I don't know. I just threw that shit out there. Oh, okay. Well, look, yeah, see, but I don't like go false allegations. Yeah, yeah I'm just, sorry. I'm sorry, Joe Rogan. Just the just the uh, the consistency of just like believing in yourself. Yes, sir. That's all it is. That's all it takes. That's all the game is. Just like keep knocking on the door. Like you know, water a water can you know burst through steel. You know why? Because this consistent spot in that same drop over and over and over again will eventually wear out that steel. Then you're like, damn. So if you're being consistent, man, just you don't know what the door will bring. Yes, just don't sir. give up, man. Yeah. And I, I'm I don't know, man. Like I like you're like I, I remember I was like watching TV like I was it was on NBC, I think. Yeah. And I was like, what the fuck is Malik doing in a fucking Xbox ad, bro? Why the Come fuck on, is this man. motherfucker on my screen all the Come time, on, bro? Man. What I'm the fuck? To... What? How did that happen, too? <laughs> Xbox, uh, shit. I just love games, and I just auditioned for that, and they like, all right, and this, and I, you know, I got that part. I got the role. So, um, and it was like a three day. It was like three of them. On two of them, uh, I filmed two, and I think we're then COVID something happened, and then you got to be vaccinated. So I didn't film three yet. And uh, just waiting for that. So that was great. That was a great opportunity, man. Yes, sir. Yeah, I love Xbox. I, but, I, I mean, I love PS5 as well. Yeah. So uh, like, uh, we all got PS5s here, man. I'm, I've been a PlayStation gamer since I was a kid, bro. That's okay. Fucking, I That's what I'm saying. It, I was as well. Then last year in the pandemic, I just bought an Xbox. Yeah. And I was like, all right. What games do you play, bro? Uh, only game I play ever is 2K. 2K? <laughs> That's, it. That's the only game I Fucking play. Fucking my park, my career, all yeah, that shit. Yeah, my career. I'm in a... I'm in a that shit's addicting, shoot. bro. Yeah, hell yeah. But I'm so busy. I suck now. Yeah. Them little kids be on there like 24-7. You see, and like, putting 11. money into that shit, too. Yeah. They on squads and team. Like, I don't really have that time and all that energy. I got to do stuff like throughout my day. So I'm like, man, <laughs> Sir. forget all that, bro. So yeah. they'll probably trash me right now in my park. I'm like, man, fuck y'all. <laughs> 
Fuck y'all, these little ass kids killing me. Like, fucking man, that's all you shoot is green. 360 dunks and shit, yeah, bro. bro. All kind of wild fucking fire coming out of that hand and Everything. shit, Everything, yeah. These crossing out like, bro, not a uh, damn. What's, what's your favorite team growing up? Uh, basketball team, always the Lakers. Lakers, okay. Yeah, I'm a San Antonio team. Spurs fan, man. Why? It's so boring. Are you, Whoa. Fr- are you from there? Uh, no, I'm not from there, but like uh, I have a lot of family from there, and like uh, I, I've I've just always been like one of the first NBA games I ever saw was like a 2007 NBA Finals. Yeah, LeBron got beat four zero by the San Antonio like, San Antonio that was Spurs. A young LeBron, bro. Yeah, that was Cavaliers. No, that was no one in that team except LeBron, exactly. <laughs> like yeah, Anderson that, Virgil. Yeah, but like, dude, like that was that was great. Like, I don't know. I've just been a Spurs fan ever since I was a kid, and like I've seen them beat Lakers so many times in the Western Conference playoffs. But I'm don't just like, no, they'll say so many times, bro. Where they they only won like twice when you were alive. Relax. They got five time. rings, bro, in ten years. So yeah. so did so did the Lakers, man. They only they only won. How old are you? Uh, I'm 19. They only won twice since you've been alive. Yeah. Uh. Yeah, so I the 2014 was, was was the most recent one. The most recent one, and the LeBron one. 27, 2007. And then... And, uh, 1999, I didn't exist. 2002, I didn't exist. Oh, damn, am I, am I missing one year? Fact check that for me. When did Spurs get all their rings? So, 14, 7, 1999. I think they got, some, I think they got one with David Robinson. Yeah, that was the 1999 1999, yeah. yeah. 2003? Two thousand three. Oh, because they beat the Heat. No, who they beat in two thousand three? Shit, Pit, I don't know. Pistons. Nah, no, two thousand three. No. Well, it might have been LeBron. The oh, Knicks. Brooklyn. Yeah, Jason Kidd. And that's oh, Jake with Kerry Kittles. Yeah. Oh yeah, I forgot. Man, I yeah. want them to win that one. Damn. Yes, sir. I, I like. I've lived here all my life, and I, I've like never been to the Staples Center to watch a game, bro. It's always so fucking expensive. Have you been? Yeah, I've been to the Staples Center. Uh, when Lonzo. That was my first time going to the Staples Center. I asked when uh, Alonzo Ball was the point guard, and I met LeVar Ball. You met LeVar Ball? Yeah. Cause How was home, he in person, man? So cool. Felt like he was like my missing uncle. <laughs> That's like my guy. Uh, my do- my guy is uh, – anytime I need Laker tickets, I just like hit up my guy. And I was like, bro, I want to meet LeVar. So he put me in like the, the lower seat area, and uh, we had like tickets to meet people after – the game and and so you wait you wait till he's like when the players are in the locker room the family and friends will wait in the section and LeVar was just taking pictures and cool chopping it up and I was like man <laughs> the realest I still got the picture I was like bro like the realest I was like bro what's up aunt? bro I love you bro <laughs> so I love you too nephew like, hell yeah man you a cool dude so yes sir I love him all the sons in the NBA now that's fucking crazy you yeah, made it man. happen bro yeah the Lakers gonna win again this year, man. We got a squad. Yeah, you got a fucking retirement home. You don't got a squad. Uh. You see, y'all see, y'all see why you bullshitting. Damn, man. I mean, I can't talk shit on the Lakers, bro. I live in LA. I, I don't hate them. I mean, yeah, there's right. no hate. It's just that like there's think, they're just so easy to root for. Sometimes yeah. they always have like the free agency fucking. Everyone, no one wants to go to San Antonio. Everyone always wants to go to fucking Los Angeles, bro. But it's a beautiful. I wouldn't. I wouldn't want to live anywhere else. But yeah, this beautiful I, city. I've thought about that too. Like in life, like the toughest part about living here is just expensive. You know, like That's gas it. is expensive. Fucking water is expensive. Yeah, but rent. you got the but you got the weather and the beach. Yeah, you, you got, got the weather every, and the beach. Um, this is Hollywood. Nowhere to be. Nowhere else to be. But you yeah, know, you somewhere probably like in New York. But New York get cold. Yeah. So. I mean, you live in the jungle, so you know how it is. Right? Uh, and uh, my 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 pops be like, "Yo, New York, man, the gangsters out there get cold outside. L.A. They put in you know work year round. Yeah, it's no weather change in L.A. You know what I mean? So your family's in L.A. or Louisiana right now? My family's in well, my mom and pops is in L.A. and my sisters and um, my extended family is in uh, down south. So my dad's side of the family is out here. My mom's side of the family is in Louisiana. For sure, man. Yeah. When, well, in your first Netflix special, you should bring out your mom, bro. Uh, we'll see. I know. We got that coming, bro. Like, we'll see. I look crazy. I've yeah. seen the unthinkable from you, man. I appreciate you. Nah, my mom cool as hell. She's so funny. She's so funny. I wish bring I could. Her, get I her wish, an open mic, man. I wish we could just film skits. Of just all That'd be fucking hilarious, bro. bro she, you're, not a, you're not that much of a skit guy, huh? Nah, I, I, like, I still have that like street mentality of like, man, I ain't trying to put that shit on man. <laughs> But you need that though. You got to be your agent. You got to be marketing yourself. So I'm starting to get more into it. I'm gonna just start posting my stand up clips because I know how beneficial yes, social sir. media is. Like you can't put butts in the seat. Why would they want you in their you know club or? 
theater, whatever it is. So you got if no one knows you, how are they gonna find out about you? Yeah, you know that's I mean? true, man. So yeah, I gotta get rid of that street mentality. So I'm slowly I, I got some ideas. I wanna always thinking before before I, I mean post. like like King Batch, uh he his fame comes from skits and vines, bro. That's it. Yeah. Uh I saw him recently. Uh he was a pretty cool dude. Like like just just talking to him like considering like uh, his social media like how big he is on social media yeah he's like really cool in person i wasn't Fuck expecting yeah. that shit you, you ever meet him in, yeah I because he him, does stand up yeah i met him outside the comedy store with my guy uh sean grant shout out to sean and uh just so cool just chill talk for like what five six minutes and then we just went our separate ways yes sir yeah he's yeah. a cool dude there, like there's a lot of cool people in the comedy industry i think everyone knows you got to be likable you can't be a fucking ass out of there of course yeah yeah, you got to be likable. Uh, you know, no beef um, with this shit. Even if, like, man, the comedy game is like some, you know, there's a lot of bitch-ass niggas in this comedy <laughs> game. I know a couple. Yeah, we can't we up. can't name them, but... Uh, Tie these motherfuckers, but yeah. these is bitches. But uh, other than that, if you weed through, like, the that crowd, you get, like, some motherfucking... You get some authentics. You get you some, some real cool people, but, but everybody, everybody here, it's, it's just like a community. It is. Yeah, it is. I didn't expect it to be this big of a community. Yeah. It's, it's also big, but, like... Everyone knows each other. Like, I don't know exactly. how to explain, like, uh, the rule of seven degrees of separation. Everybody knows each other. Everybody knows each other, yeah. But, like, when I when I first entered, like, I honestly didn't think there would be this many people pursuing comedy. And there's, like, there's like so many, like, circles, too. There's, like, people, are, like, you, you just miss every time by, like, an hour. Like, oh, oh, like, I know a guy who's always been going to Burt's Backroom, but I recently just met him fucking midnight right here yeah yeah you just miss people well, and also you, you you know they you, you'd be surprised if people they hear about you in seattle texas yeah vegas dude. phoenix that's York, crazy chicago that's, florida so you've been like yeah. all around the united states i've only been here that. maximum so that's fucking crazy bro but it's circles you can hit up someone who's been there and they be like hey bro can you give me spots and they'll reach out to you like hey bro my guy's coming in town and they was like oh you gotta hit up this mic so it's just really a community like do you know uh you know, do you know mike and nolan uh, yeah, they, yeah, they own this yeah, place. Yeah, uh, yeah. we call it. They're they're from Seattle. They're kind of from Seattle. I, and shit. That's I, crazy. I, I fucking saw him in Seattle. What yeah. the fuck? You see on, how small no, that world Nolan is? Nolan put me on the show. That's fucking it was wild. Like, hit up bro. Nolan. Yeah, hit up Nolan. He put me on the show. Because they they got a podcast studio exactly like this in in Seattle. In Seattle yep. yep. I was supposed to go. Yeah. You you were supposed to go. What happened? Yeah. I, I had to leave town. Oh okay okay. Early. Yeah. My shout out to Nolan and Mike. Those are my guys. They just got back from uh, New York with uh, Craig Conan. Oh, that yeah, that that white surfer dude with the beard, long hair. Yeah, yeah, my guy. I seen him around. Craig, Craig, what's his name? Craig, Conan. Conan. Okay, okay, for sure. I think I've seen a set or something, uh, something or other. Yeah, he's he's insane, man. Yeah, he's but this is this is such a good business, man. Like um, Ari Manis does the same thing, mm -hmm. uh, and Mel Rose podcast. Yep, uh, to them. That's that's a fucking convenient ass location, right? Slap factories right there, yep. comedy stores right there, improvs right here. You hungry? You got pink tacos across the street. Pink tacos, strip club right down the street too. Yep. You ever like? You ever been to a strip club? No, nah, it's not my thing, man. Yeah, yeah, it's not my thing either. But it's just fucking interesting how it's just fucking right next to the fucking McDonald's in L.A. Man, L.A.'s on some crack. Man, you get a strip club and a, a liquor store right on the same block, bro. <laughs> man, it doesn't matter. It's LA. L.A. is something, bro. Like the amount of people that have, that have been. That I've, that I've seen just like you know bill burr was here yeah were you were you at at in no, person I wasn't here, but i heard, I heard. yeah that's heard. fucking wild how he that someone the, can just drop in he was at the chocolate uh he was at chocolate sundays last night with donnell rollins damn that's fucking crazy bro yeah uh also like the first time i ever went to the improv bro i saw fucking um craig robinson playing piano just having a good time you ever Two see hours. craig yeah I, I try to stay as much as I can, but it's like, all right. He goes on for, bro, it was, he was going on to like 2, 3 a.m., bro. Fucking, that's Craig, man. Craig just had fun with him. I'm like, Craig, I got to go. But people, it's better for clubs because people still order drinks and shit like that, so. Yes, sir. And he's having fun. He's playing the piano. He got music <laughs> going on. So he just, you know, he got a whole little system out there. Yes, sir. Uh, so, again. Malik, thank you so much for coming and bro, like thank you, thank for, you for not me. fucking flaking. I respect you Hell so much, no, bro. bro. Why like, would I do I've that? Been, I've been watching you for a really long time. <laughs> Appreciate uh, you, my G. Uh, guys, if you want to find Malik, uh, it's uh, how do you pronounce your last name? Bazil. Bazil, yeah. Bazil, yeah. yeah. Malik at Ma Malik Bazil. His podcast is uh, the Cutting Way Podcast. Uh, he's he's a really good guy, man. I, I've been watching that. him for two, three years now. He's killing it, bro. 
Mm. You're going to fucking randomly see him on 2K one day, fucking mocap. Uh, <laughs> trying. You're, you're going to see him on Netflix one day. Mm. Uh, inshallah, man. Appreciate uh, that. Really bro. proud of what you're doing. And I'll link all your stuff down below. Link everything, bro. Make sure you know about me. Yeah. USR slash cutting weight. Cutting weight. You know what it is. Come yeah. get the ski mask, bro. It's waiting for you. Oh, you that's on me? for sale, too? Yeah, we're going to try to get yeah, with the bro. Rolex sign. Um, Mike, make sure you get my shit right, bro. I'm talking to the editor. Hold on, yeah, he's he's pointing. At me you know, right you now. know Michael. Nah, I just met him outside. He's a good dude. Bro. Oh shit, I'll yes make sir. Sure you don't, yeah, can I see Michael the Classic? Mask? There it is, Mike. Thank you, Mike. Hell yeah, yeah. Yes, sir, Mike. Yeah, that's what I need. And Mike's shout out fucking... to my shout out to the Hood series. He's throwing a B up. That's my, bro. you know, that's the line. You can get that at uh, Hood. We are gonna have a website up. Yes, but, sir. Yeah, other than that, man, appreciate you. Keep supporting the Courtesy Flush. Yes, sir. It's been so, so dope. Like my man, adventure man. He getting, he you know, he getting comfortable with this shit. Yes, sir. I'm, right, uh, I'm gonna get big one day, and uh, Hell yeah. good luck on your set on North Hollywood. What the Hell fuck? Hell yeah, the ha ha eight o'clock. Ha ha eight o'clock. Yeah, working out some shit, trying to stay grounded. That's what it is. Shout out to Mike for putting the screen. This should have been like this the whole time, Mike. Yeah. You motherfucker, you, motherfucker, you late <laughs> asshole. God damn. Nah, nah, he good. Shout out to Mike. Mike a real one. My Mike fucking real one, bro. I like, I like the sign though. I like the uh, courtesy flush. The thing. art. Yeah, yeah. The art. That was art. I like it too. Yep. Fuck right, yeah. Bro. Thank you so much. Appreciate bro. you, my gang. Big Sean. Man, fuck Big Sean. Rolly Boy had to hit him with the diss song. Think he all that because he signed a good music. Motherfucker, you don't even make good music. They say I didn't have bars. Well, I'm a whole Xanax. And we can take it to the ring, too. Don't panic. Sean, too busy with your neighbor.